This segment is brought to you by Etherington and Buckets. My field was engineering, crap magnetics, and so it gave me a good living. So technology, for me, changed it well. Uh, definitely, yes. I'm a technology fan, a buff. I love it. I hold my cell phone at all times. Um, I can't live without it, though. That's how it's affected me. Um, if I forget it, it's like the end of the world. Welcome back. Listen Up is delving into how communication technology shapes our lives. And our next guest says technology can be dangerous. So that makes technology an ethical issue and the subject of a hot classroom debate. To tell us all about it, Professor Robert Doty and student Hannah Jenkins join us from Trinity Western University. Thank you both for being with us. Thanks for inviting Thanks us. Thanks for having us. All right, so Professor Doty, why do you see technology as dangerous? Well, I, I think that that posture towards it is probably the safest posture. And instead of embracing it mindlessly as a friend, um, technology not only does stuff for us, it, it, it does stuff to us, it gives, it takes away, it undoes certain things. That dare is very much um, addressing that issue of hard, hard to get your head around this if you've grown up with it. it I, I'm trying to give students the opportunity to kind of contrast life with these technologies and life without them. And many of them uh, don't have that contrast because these technologies have become so much uh, a part of their lives, their social lives from uh, early age. And of course, the next decade or so, we're going to have people whose whole lives, whole social lives have been structured through this. So what I'm attempting to do with this DARE, or this extra credit um, media fast in my class, is to help students recognize how technology hides, becomes transparent in its use. And a lot like glasses that we wear all the time, um, we, we look through these technologies rather than at them and often forget that they are even additions to our lives. Okay, so Hannah, you took up your professor on his challenge to have a media fast. He's asking students to give up their high-tech toys, to stay away from media. Describe your fast to us, Hannah, when you said, okay, professor, you're on. Well, I agreed to give up um, Facebook, all social networking tools, so MSN Messenger, television, and movies. And by far, Facebook was the hardest one for me to give up because it's how I communicate with lots of people and it's how I know about events that are going on, etc. So it was difficult. It was a hard decision to make. How long were you going to be giving up Facebook and all your other things? It was for a semester's period, so it was from January to April. Wow. And how did you um, announce that to your friends? How did this go down? Well, I had to send out a mass Facebook message, ironically to everybody who I communicated with on a regular basis on Facebook, which was a lot of people, including my mom, um, and, and let them know that they'd have to contact me by phone, email, or letter. And it was wonderful, because I actually got quite a few handwritten letters after I cut Facebook. Um, but people were just shocked. You know, you'd think that, and, and, and they were all so um, appreciative and admiring of it, like you had given up a drug addiction or something that they wish they could kick also. <laughs> Wow, and Professor, you've had other students take up a challenge like Hannah did. What changes have you seen in them? Yeah, part of the challenge is to write uh, a journal w with weekly entries of two to three pages of reflection on their experience in this challenge. And I get to read those at the end of the semester. And uh, it's uh, interesting uh, that uh, students, many of them comment on just what Hannah was speaking to, uh, the change in their social lives and the amount of time that they have and how these technologies th that they thought would enhance their social relationships um, offline 
in many ways displaced those uh, social relationships. And so they're, they're discovering that uh, they're spending more time with people face to face in the vulnerable, risky, um, irreversible encounters that uh, I think are so humanizing. Um, they also find that they're going out for walks, um, and, and part of the, the surprise to students is many of them end up losing weight through this media fast, I, interestingly enough, um, because they are more active. They're not texting their, their parents downstairs to, you know, bring up some tea. They're outside. They're um, not munching mindlessly in front of the television. Okay, and Hannah, how did that affect you? How did your spiritual habits, your other habits change after this fast? Well, I did. I definitely started doing a quiet time again, which is something I've done in the past in my life. But it can be hard in university to set that time apart. Um, but with, with no Facebook to be checking constantly or anything, I realized that was something that I wanted to use to fill that free time that I now had. Um, and, and I found it did give me just more alone time, just like Dr. Doty said, to sit and meditate about time in general and how I want to be making use of my days. Do I want to be looking at a friend third removes pictures from Hawaii or do I want to be like educating myself or something like that? So it had wow. a huge effect. And you, so you would say uh, you, you grew through the experience? I definitely grew, yeah. All right, and Professor Doty, what grade did Hannah get in the course? She got an A+. Plus. <laughs> very good. Well, to both of you, back to school. Uh, thank you very much with, uh, for challenging us to think about a media fast to uh, learn what we might find on the inside of us. Professor Doty and Hannah Jenkins from Trinity Western University, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, when Listen Up returns, from the speed of his former marketing job at Porsche to the speed of a computer, Shane Hitz warns we're being rewired for speed and we might not like where technology is taking us. We'll meet the author of Flickering Pixels in just a moment.